The last couple seasons in Formula 1 have been unfathomably boring. Like, genuinely boring, not just boring compared to the whole 2021 season where you literally heard everything you could ask for. You had awful drivers who really didn't know how to drive, and the second you opened your eyes from your milliseconds of blinking, it seemed like every time you did that, they were in the wall or crashing into somebody else, somehow. You had veteran drivers who weren't performing, you had people retiring, and of course, a championship battle which ended in tragedy for some and joy for others. And a sprinkle of crashes between the two protagonists as well. How entertaining was that? Seems like a quite intense championship battle is brewing up. Mercedes might be coming into the mix as well. Ferrari, they're looking a tiny bit washed, but still, P2 and the constructors, P2 and the standings. Lando Norris is cooking as well. Three-way scrap for the title. Ooh, entertaining. Subscribe and like, otherwise it will not happen. Nope, I genuinely mean it. It won't happen. I'll make sure of it. If you fast forward a season or two in Formula 1, everything about the sport is literally the polar opposite. You see, people watch Formula 1, people follow Formula 1 to see the uncertainty, the battle for the win, the entertainment, the, oh my god, who might win today? I'm not sure. I think we better watch the race, because if we don't, we might miss an absolute banger. Similarly, everybody watches movies or TV shows with the uncertainty, the confusingness of your brain. What might happen next? Who's gonna die? What is gonna happen? Who's gonna... I'm not sure. I'm not even sure what's happening. That's why Now You See Me is such a good film, because you have no clue what is actually happening. And that's why you probably get bored when you watch TV shows or movies literally for kids, because you know what's going to happen. Bad guy does something bad, good guy goes to save the day, hooray hooray, good guy wins, bad guy loses. It's all the same. Boring, you know what's going to happen. Same thing when you're reading a book, you don't know what's going to happen, you keep on reading, you get hooked, and you keep on reading, blah 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 blah. And that's why you probably don't want to read Biff and Chip, because you know what's going to happen. Through all of that, some of the greatest seasons in Formula 1 have boiled down to like the last couple laps, the last race, the last couple races of the season, the uncertainty, everyone, everybody's eyes are glued to the screen, who's going to win this championship, who's going to win the race, I don't know, I think we better watch it. It's the surprise wins, the drama, the controversy that really hooks everybody to this wonderful sport. Who is going to win? And that's what makes the sport so great. But if you already know the outcome of, say, a movie, a book, hey, even a championship, then what's the real point of watching? Isn't it that just a bit boring? You know what's going to happen. You know that Verstappen's going to win. What's the actual point of watching? That's right. Most probably you wouldn't watch. You watch the first lap to see if there's any first lap drama. And then what? You're not going to watch through the next 50 odd laps or so. Just Max Verstappen leading every single lap. Just a bit. Why would you do that to yourself? Now you might be sitting, standing, walking, really doing whatever and thinking in your little brain, which is probably very smart, Max Verstappen hater. You are. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you something. No. Now, I don't mind Max Verstappen winning every single race, like these, all of these incompetent forwards always complaining, oh, another Max Verstappen win. You know what? He can be winning, fair enough. He's one of the greatest sportsman people of this generation, competing with, say, Ronaldo, LeBron James, Steph Curry, all, all of them, everybody. He is one of the best. He is truly a champion. And honestly, with the drive that he pulls out, he probably deserves to win every single race, given he has the best car. And even when he doesn't have the best car, maybe the second or third best car, he somehow still manages to pull it out of the bag somehow. Unless it's Monaco and he's learned his lesson not to dive bomb people down, say, turn one, no heroics into San Devot, or down into that chicane. Anyways, he's a true warrior, and I don't want to take any of his wins away from him. I don't want to be like, no, 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 you can't have them. You had a good car. Oh, 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 oh. I don't mind him winning when there's somebody else that could possibly also win the race. I do mind people winning, not just Max Verstappen, when there's sheer and absolute dominance like we've had had for the last two years. But this year, 
is a tad different. Even rolling it back to a couple days in Canada, he won the race. I was very, very happy for him because, because nothing was guaranteed in that race. George Russell could have won. Piastri could have won. Hamilton could have won. Everybody, even Lando, Lando could have won. He was leading by 12 seconds. Safety car, yeah, that didn't work in your favor now, did it? Might have worked to Miami. Norris trumps Verstappen and wins the Miami Grand Prix. But not now. And I say anybody could have won. And by anybody, I mean like the top five or so. Logan Sargent couldn't have won. He was in the wall. Neither could Sergio Perez. Guess what? He was also in the wall. But if there's at least some uncertainty of who might win the race, whether it be Max Verstappen, whether it be Hamilton, Norris, I don't mind because that's what keeps everybody entertained, keeps everybody watching for the 70 odd laps or so. Who could win this race? George Russell was leading a significant part of the race. Maybe George Russell could win. Lando is leading. Maybe Lando could win. And then Verstappen starts leading and then maybe Verstappen could win. All of that playing with our emotions, that is... That is the purity of the sport. That's what it's meant to be every single weekend. That is literally Canada showing up Monaco saying, this is what a Formula One race is meant to be. Not everyone sticking to the exact same position throughout the entire race. Monaco was quite a boring race. You see, in 2024, nothing is guaranteed. Race seats aren't guaranteed. Contracts, they aren't guaranteed. Podiums aren't guaranteed. Race wins aren't guaranteed. The championship isn't guaranteed. Neither is the constructors. And all of that build-up has now led to this. 2024 might be the greatest season of all time. Dun, dun, dun. Whoa, no way you just said that. That is crazy. Yeah, I said it. For starters, the teams are making this season quite interesting. There are obviously good teams and there's obviously bad teams. But through all of that... There is obviously drama in between teams. There's battles. Every team is fighting a battle against someone, whether it be Red Bull against the Ferraris against the McLarens, whether it be the Mercedes trying to get back up to the top and maybe potentially on occasions fighting the Aston Martins, potentially being knocked out of Q1, where in a Mercedes that was literally winning every single race a couple years ago, kind of messes with your brain that Canada was their first podium of the year. And the lower teams down the grid are having one of the greatest battles of all time. Sauber, Haas, Williams, RB, they're running away from it. And Alpine as well, who expected Alpine to be down at the bottom of the grid. A team that last year was scoring podiums. A team that two years ago had Fernando Alonso and Oscar Piastri in their team. And somehow all of that has slowly faded away into pretty much a little niche. Near niche of points and a near zero of everything that is happening in that team. The drama of every single team this year finally battling for something, whether it be, to be honest, getting higher in the constructors, winning races consistently, even getting the constructors championship, because that isn't guaranteed by any stretch. Max Verstappen might be winning a lot of races, but Sergio Perez a lot of the time is getting knocked out of Q1 and then crashing out into the races. Keep in mind that he's just re-signed the contract. That begs the question, is he cut for Formula One? Is he good for Red Bull? Is he going to hinder everything that Red Bull has built up? Is he even that good? The exact same car that Max Verstappen is winning races, Sergio Perez is getting knocked out of Q1 and somehow managing to mess up the race as well. What the fuck? Sergio Perez has been on the field since 2011, and by the time well, he's been in the sport for, what, 13 years now, surely he should be somewhat good? <laughs> Maybe not. Wins are something that also aren't guaranteed in the sport at the moment. One week, who knows, you might be winning the race by 22 seconds, just like Max Verstappen did in Bahrain. A perfect start to the season. But now, it's not guaranteed at all. His car might blow up. And then you get a nice little Carlos Sainz win for the redemption. His redemption arc has started. Getting booed out of Ferrari? Hey, I can put up some good performances. A Ferrari 1-2, headed by Carlos Sainz. Of course, it isn't just Ferrari who are battling for wins this season. We've seen, obviously, Charles Leclerc won that beautiful drive in Monaco, where all he had to do was keep it on the island because there's no way nobody's overtaking around Monaco. Lando Norris has also won a race just on pure pace, nearly won around Imola, just behind by seven tenths, which I don't mind Verstappen winning that race because there was, oh my God, who might win this race? You know what I'm saying? It, it all makes sense. 
And now it seems like the Mercedes might be back. Who knows? They might have won Canada just to, like two days ago or a day ago, whatever. There's, you know, they might have won that. There are teams which are battling for these wins. And it isn't certain like it has been for the last two years. Oh my God, Verstappen, he's going to win the race. No, it doesn't matter whether he's starting 10th or 14th. He's going to win it, or first, he is going to win it. Which that leads me on to my next point of the podiums aren't guaranteed as well. If there's, hmm, if there's four teams which are consistently battling for the win, therefore there are eight drivers who are consistently, potentially, maybe, battling for the podiums. Keep in mind there are only three slots on the podium first, second, and third, and there are eight drivers who every race could be on that po- seven drivers, because we're obviously discounting Sergio Perez. So, there's still a lot of drivers who could be on that podium. Which that also makes it interesting, because getting on the podium is the first step. You're close to the win, and who knows? You might be on the winner's step soon, you know? Oscar Piastri, P2 ran Monaco, he was close. He was very close, and who knows? He might join that winner's category this year as well. Oh, and you are quite smart, and you are very, very, very correct. Uncertain of podiums and wins, uncertain of who can score the most points each race. Who knows one race Max Verstappen could be winning the race. The next race Max Verstappen can be in P6 around Monaco. Who knows? One race Charles Leclerc might be winning the race in Monaco. The son of a hairdresser is a cut above the rest. Here in Monaco, his hometown, his home run, Charles Leclerc wins the Monaco Grand Prix. And the next race, the P20, because they're that awfully slow. I think the Ferrari depression era has resumed once again. The clowns have returned to the Ferrari strategies. Everything is going back to normal. Which I guess normal isn't good because normal is Max Verstappen wins and Ferrari being Ferrari. Hey, but the constructors' points are pretty tight. The drivers' championship points are pretty tight. The championship right now is very, very... It's like a grey area of who could win. Max Verstappen might win again, but I wouldn't mind if there's an actual contention for the battle. Lando and Charles, they are both very able to win the championship. They obviously can win races. Lando Norris has learnt that from his Sochi days. But he's won a race now, so that's good. Now all he's left is to compete for the championship. Same as Charles Leclerc. Three-way battle for the win. Yeah, sounding like Lightning McQueen. And wasn't that an entertaining film to watch? And for the first time in a very, very long while, the field is actually bunched together. Very, very close together. One tenth, two tenths, you might be out of Q1. One tenth, two tenth, that might be the difference between pole position and P10 in Q3. The field is so unfathomably close that one little upgrade can literally make the difference of maybe potentially standing on the podium, being in the top, or well secured in the top 10, and being well out of the points in top, in not even the top, in the bottom five. With a close field, everybody is trying to extract the most performance they can out of their little motor vehicle, whether that be a couple extra tenths, a couple extra milliseconds of lap time per lap. And say you aren't the greatest of drivers, that is where mistakes can start creeping in, and that's what we've seen this year with a ton of drivers. Now, the only pretty sad thing about Formula 1 at the moment is that the engines and everything, all the mechanical issues and stuff, really is no issues. That is all pretty tight. There's no real, ah, oh, oh no, my engine blew up. Oh no, I'm Danny Ricciardo in the Red Bull back in the day. My engine blows up pretty much every single weekend. There's none of that, and I'm kind of sad about that because that, yet again, is another curveball down into the... Formula One and Ness of the world. And driver issues are also something that keeps the sport entertaining. Thank everybody that we have Logan Sargent in the sport and that we have Checo Paris in the sport because without those two, everybody would just be little robots on their ways to just 60 laps, 60 laps, no mistakes and all of that sort of thing. With their faults or issues, they throw in safety cars, they throw in red flags into the race that wouldn't have happened otherwise. And that's yet again keeps everybody on their toes. What might happen? Next. Keep watching, you'll find out. The driver market is also something that is keeping this season quite entertaining. Pretty much every single driver was out of contract at the end of the season, and there has been twists and turns in literally everything that has happened. Lewis Hamilton to Ferrari. Whoa, 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 slow your horses. Carlos Sainz out of a race seat, won a race this season, stood on the podium multiple times. Why is he gone? In some miraculous ways, Sergio Perez has managed to sign a contract with Red Bull, even though he's just 
crashed out of Monaco, crashed out of Canada twice, did two incidents in that race, hasn't got into Q3 in the last three races. I don't know why he's got in that contract. But, you know, that's that. Junior drivers, potentially Oliver Baum and Kimi Antonelli moving up from Formula 2 into Formula 1. Even more entertainment. Esteban Ocon causing drama with his teammate yet again. Now, if I were in my car, I'd look at that space and go, well, that's too small. And then I'd go find another. But that's not what a French person would do. I mean, no surprise there. He's been terrorizing his teammates for the last ever. And who knows, we might see Mick Schumacher back in the sport. Wouldn't that be just lovely? And I just would like to say this, and also an entertaining thing about the season, is seeing George Russell fumble at potentially getting wins yet again. He's done it in so many other races, and he managed to do it yet again in Canada, nearly dumping it into the wall like he did last year. Huh. Who's going to be paired with George Russell next year? Will George Russell be the primary driver, or will he be just a driver who knows every driver in 2024 has their own storyline every team has their own storyline they're all fighting for something whether it be to retain their seat whether it be to win the championship to score points something like that if you're ricardo you had dreams and aspirations of potentially getting to hmm, let's say the red bull but he currently has dreams and aspirations to not be booted out of formula one Everybody has their own storyline. Everybody could have a novel written about them. Ian Fleming, if he was still alive, that would be a great read to read. And honestly, this season is a great season to watch. So with that said, let me know down in the comments, do you think that this will be a good season as it has been so far? Or will it dwindle down like it has done over the last couple of years and Max Verstappen will go to his terror and start winning races over and over and over and over again? Let me know down in the comments and whilst you're there, you might as well subscribe and like. Don't know why you wouldn't, because that kind of makes me sad. Don't die, don't get hit by a car, because then you're dead and then you can't watch the videos. Which makes me sad and the whole world sad and probably everything that everybody that knew you. Probably a bit sad. So don't do that. Anyway, have a safe and fantastic rest of the day. And push. That's all, folks.